Let me move over to what's actually driving the guidance and the influence of the GI Cancers Alliance. I mean, is it just a leadership council? Uh, Martha, you started to talk about the Healthcare Professional Advisory Committee. What's, what will we see in the next 12 months that start has already started to talk about where, where we are getting our guidance and who's helping to influence where we go next? So, as you mentioned, I think one of the most exciting things that uh, we are launching is the Healthcare uh, Professional Advisory Board. And so that will be individuals, you know, everyone from oncologists, you know, primary care, nutritionists, as Craig mentioned, social workers, any type of healthcare professional that, you know, would be able to help the patient through their journey. So with, with their expertise, um, having a seat at the table, I think it will be wonderful because they'll be able to help us vet all of our educational materials, yep. our resource library, and really um, give their opinion what may be most helpful uh, for patients. So I think in the next 12 months, that will be a, a wonderful opportunity. Again, with our website, that will be launched um, in the next few months. The survivorship care plan will be launched in the next few months. So right. a very busy time, very uh, sure. wonderful opportunities and growth. Absolutely. And Craig, you being one of the founders of this alliance, we start off with Georgetown, and then we look at, again, guidance and leadership broadening that. So where do you see that going? Is it other academic institutions getting involved along the way? Is it bringing industry more? Uh, obviously, the seed of an idea has to be just that, start someplace. Sure. So as we look at the leadership that's going to help to influence us, any you know, additional information on that? I, I think that the perspective that we had at the beginning was that we, we see our role as being a convener, but certainly not uh, in any way the final determiner of who's in or out. Right. And, and we know that, you know, every day that our clinicians are collaborating with their colleagues at other institutions as they think about uh, the most appropriate way to care for their patients. And right. so we should bring that level of sort of day-to-day uh, -day collaboration that they're doing between between centers and practices uh, and really make sure that we mirror that within with, within the GI Cancers Alliance. We also talked about creating a leadership voice, again, as part of really the, the mission and the vision here. And a lot of that goes to how we market ourselves and how we get the name of the GI Cancers Alliance out there to be respected, to have the right people, to have the right members, to have the right guidance along the way. So let's talk about that for a second. So if we look again at the next two to three years, in terms of how we're going to get our voice out there. We obviously have things such as the websites. We have conferences. Uh, do you see the GICA as being a go-to organization for media to ask critical questions about GI cancers? Again, do we see ourselves to be keynote speakers at conferences and symposiums? Where would we advise and talk to our members about who might be viewing this as to where we can go with this and how big do we want to be in terms of, or how well known do we want to be in terms of the leadership standpoint? I think definitely with with the advances in our um, healthcare professional um, board, I can easily see that we would be that kind of go-to if there's you know press uh, or media opportunities uh, for one of our uh, physicians to be able to speak to different you know clinical trials or new treatments, etc. And I think also, uh, as far as speakers at conferences, you know, we're already doing that in many, many respects. Yeah. And I think kind of being that voice of the patient, the voice of the caregiver, elevating that voice, it's such an amazing opportunity for all of our organizations and our patient communities to really feel that they have a say and that their voice is equal and their voice matters. I think as long as we are, you know, staying true to our vision and our mission, which I know we will, I hope that we will continue to grow um, and and really increase um, increase the awareness because in the end, that's just going to help our patients more and more. To build on what both of you said, the, another critical factor for the GI Cancer Alliance is what we've been doing pretty well over the last couple of months, which is creating these partnerships. And partnerships is also a very important element of the GI Cancers Alliance in terms of getting our voice out and creating that leadership that we wanna have. So we're lucky enough to have partnerships with MJH Associates, with Cure Magazine, 
with smart patients, with ASCO, other organizations that are critical in the cancer area that already have a base platform that we don't have to create from scratch, that we can then get our voice out there, get our people out, get our patients out there, our caregivers, uh, hopefully people who will be on the healthcare professional advisory committee, whatever that might be, to utilize those as a ways to get all the great other information that we have going on. And in particular, I think getting it out to, again, those rural communities, which are not have those centers of excellence in the GI cancer. So they're aware of what's going on, aware of us as a resource, and then helping to bring patients to the right resources along the way. So I think partnership is a critical area there too, yeah. yeah I really think that the, the notion that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts is, is maybe is should a be a, a, an additional mantra for us or something right. like that. Right, right. Absolutely. Thinking about our members, many of whom are very small organizations, right, yeah. the commitment that these folks have made, and often this is additional time to their day job, which is very, very busy, uh, speaks to their commitment to patients um, and their commitment to the GI Cancer Alliance. And we really could not do this work if we didn't have the, this, these many collective voices at the table. A critical thing for us is we are now building this community. The community needs to be active, even though we do have lots of other jobs going on, but the more active the community is, whether it's just bringing forth needs to the leadership of the GI Cancer Alliance, uh, helping to bring in other members, helping to bring us, you know, more people to be on the advisory committee. I think eventually we'll probably have a board of directors as we as we grow and become uh, more of a voice there. But I think the critical area is for all of us to take an active role in this, even if there's if if it's only a smidgen of what another group can do. The smaller ones can only do so much more than what the larger ones can, but I think everyone being active participants will help this them become just a huge force in the GI cancer community there. This has been a great discussion. For more information on the GI Cancers Alliance, visit us at gicancersalliance.org. And thank you for watching us on Cure Connections.